What's chapter three gonna be? Please don't be a labyrinth again. Factorized. So I'm in a factory now. Oh, good lord. Um, yes, yes, save. <clears throat> you are, yeah, you are a big skull. Door is firmly shut. Okay, okay. Later, skull, Mr. Face. Shut up. Mr. Glowy Skull. You gotta do something else now, aren't you? Badoosh. Blinky giddy faster. Blinky giddy faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do something already, you douche. Hurry up, Mr. Face. Come on, kill me already! You know you want to! What the what? Oh, a pentagram. Some kind of altar. Goody. Some kind of machine. Hello? Hello! How are you? <coughs> oh, switch. Oh, good. I can sprint. Okay, I pulled the switch. Now what? Do I just have to find and pull all the switches because it's a factory, or what? Oh, but up, but up. Oh. I think there's a switch back there. Is that another one? Oh, god dang it. Almost the lights on a runway at airports. It looks like an elevator. Maybe. Probably need to keep that in mind. Okay, it's just to the right of the now slightly glow glowing pentagram. Fantastic. Hi. Green landscape. Oh, hey. Are you... Are you what? Oh, how are you? Oh. I'm... You know, trapped in a nightmare, so it's about as good as you'd expect. Can't go that way. Okay, so... Hello, Mr. Face. You look like a shadow with a piece of bread for a head. No offense, man. Okay, so, pulling the switches... I wonder if one of these other ones are... Where were the other ones? Were the other ones open now? Or what? Yep. Hello, Mr. Face. Creepy mask. Uh... Yeah, what do you want, Mr. Face? Go away. Yeah, nice to see you too. Oh, we moved. So there's the elevator. <clears throat> Did the one up here open this time, or wait? Th that's that's the same one. This there's one up here. Yeah. Yes. Yo. It's raining blood again. Okay. Yeah. Hi again. I think I, uh, I already pulled that one. That's... They're on the right side when they're... Hmm. Oh, this one's open. Oh no, this this one I've already done. Maybe that one down here where Mr. Face... Oh wait. Yo! Really? No comments about the big 
goop. Shut up. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Face, let me in. God damn it. Okay, there must still be missing one somewhere. Maybe. Was there one in this corner? I didn't really. Aha! Got the gears grinding. Dum da dum da dum. So is this one open now? Oh yeah, it's open. And Mr. Face is gone. Fantastic. Hey, yeah, pentagram. I think this is the last one. Surely nothing bad will happen. Better make a note of where that fucking elevator is. I gotta get back to that pentagram, I think. Hey, buddy. What do you want, Mr. Face? It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness alone, frightened, aware of a rotten change in the atmosphere. A thickening of the air as if someone had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twists of the bedsheets below, the first anxious increase in my heartbeat, and the realization that, once again, something in the bottom bunk, that word, a word which had been sent to exile, filtered up through my consciousness. Breaking free of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bed sheets lay calm and dormant, but they had been replaced by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, rasping breath heaved and escaped from the thing below. I can imagine its chest rising and falling with each sordid, wheezing, gar garbled breath. I shuddered and hoped beyond all hope that it would leave without occurrence. The house lay, as it had the previous night, in a thick blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, but all for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate, I lived there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go, to leave me alone. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling ha transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw around itself around in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. But that thing lying in there in the darkness, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing a young boy, calmly and nonchalantly sat up. His labored breathing had become louder. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slats separated my body from the unearthly breath below. As I, I lay there, my eyes filled with tears, a fear which mere words cannot relate to you or anyone else coursed through my veins. I would not have believed that this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like, sitting there, listening from below to my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. My imagination then turned to un an unnerving reality in which it began to touch the wooden slats which my mattress sat on. It seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the wood. Then, with great force, I prodded angry, angrily between the two slats into the mattress. Even through the padding, I felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I let an almighty cry and the wheezing, shaking, and the moving thing in the bunk below replied in kind by violently vibrating the bunk as it done, had done the night before. Small flakes of paint powdered on my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it, backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light, and there stood my mother, loving, caring as she always was. With a comforting hug and calming words, which 
eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course she asked what was wrong, but I could not say. I dared not say. I simply said one word over and over and over again. Nightmare. This pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time, I would scream so as not to provide this abomination with time to prod and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times and come up with success with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. The room where the light from outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time, you can become desensified to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that, for whatever reason, this thing would not harm me when my mother was present. I am sure the same would be, have been said for my father, but as loving as he was, waking him from his sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4. Anger Overlord. I'm guessing... Mr. Creepy Face is uh, gonna be pissed. Locked. Hi. What's this? Piece of meat. What? Stop that. Earthquake? I'm guessing not an earthquake. Ow. What the fuck? Oh. Paint and glass to fix the scene from the Bible. Which scene? Door! Very stressful with disgusting stuff inside. Like human heads or children's heads or something. My children's heads. Stop with the earthquakes. Heads of some sort. What is it with this game and heads? I'm leaving. Fuck you. Mainly because I didn't look this way. I want to look this way. That's a big spider. That's a big spider. Uh-uh. Nope. 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 Hey, Mr. Face. Wake up! It's a big pool, but I'd rather not use it. I'm gonna have to run up the way- run out of this. You didn't hear shit. Hey, Mr. F Fuck you. Hey, Mr. Face! Bring it! What do you got for me? Mr. Face, where are you? Mr. Face! Hi! Crunch. Oh, hi! Hi. Why are you doing that? What happened to your face, man? Yo, ripped off. Okay, so... 
Okay, the mouths aren't closing this time. I guess I just keep running. This shit's getting louder. Oh god, a baby. Someone get the chloroform. Ah, stop it. It's annoying. Holy shnikes! Ah, oh, shnikes. Um. Well, this is bad. Bad, baby. Go away. You're not welcome here. Why can't I just curb stop him? My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short, and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness, robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights, and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and felt nothing but anguish at her illness, to this day I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her. But of what my nightly visitor may do should it become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence being the one thing which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and mattress from the lower bunk. Moving all the slats and placing an old desk, a chest of drawers, and some chairs where we kept in which we kept in the cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box and take the small family crucifix which I had seen there before. While my family were not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came as I drifted off to dream. I hoped would awaken and went without incidents. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. Of course it was. Chapter 5. Urban Explorer. Goody. Yes, I want to save. It says, woof. Yeah, because that's a great thing to do. Bunch of school books. Feeling that something's invading your privacy, even without ill will, is still disturbing. Oh, hello there. Nope. You are good. Thank you. Even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear from them, or for them. Dinosaurs! Shut up! I'm trying to enjoy the dinosaur painting. There's a Triceratops. Fuck yeah! The sounds of screams were awful. They were even worse when they were your own. What's in this door? Fuck you! Window? Desk? Table? 
There's a piece of paper here. It reads, knock, knock. Who is it? This is a bed. Pile of mattresses. <coughs> Fuck you. What's this? Oh, that was a door. I... Can I leave this room? I don't want to be in that room. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. School material on it. Boxes! Oh, filing cabinet. My, my mistake. Um. Well, I guess I gotta go down the stairs. Where that thing went. Bye bye. I'm gonna check the other rooms first. I don't like this room. That room's weird. Lock and the door is broken. There's holes. So, uh. What was the point of this room? Ah, dude, you're you're in my way. I have to wait for you to go past, or what? What is the point of this? You're annoying. Shut up. Thank you. Anything back here? You big old bag of dicks. What am I? What? I'm confused. I'm so very, very confused. Oh, god damn it. <clears throat> Where do you think you're going, buddy? There has to be something to this room. I just don't know what it is yet. Alright, he following Mr. Face. Mr. Face? Busted old machine. Busted old machine. Plants. Because down is such a lovely way to go. Am I back in the... Oh, shut up! Uh... Nope. I don't know where I'm going. Am I supposed to know where I'm going? Because I don't know where I'm going. Shut up. Wine, bitch, moan, complain. What do you got for me? Well, it's at the end of the long, dark hallway. Nothing good, I'm sure. Well, what the fudge? Is this a repeating hallway over and over and over? Oh. Hello! What are you, what are you doing? Are you gonna sacrifice me or worship me? Or snack on me? I'm sure this went fabulously. So, what are you gonna do? Is that the dinner bell? Yep, that was the dinner bell. Definitely the dinner bell.